Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today I want to talk to you all about volume, because I think we can all agree that volume matters. If you're making music, it matters what volume things are. I think this is pretty fundamental. But unfortunately, when it comes time to mix and learn recording and all these mixing mastering techniques, there's so many different terms that are not super obvious what they mean when you're just starting out. And it took me years to understand a lot of these. So what I wanted to do is create a video that I always wish I had, which is a one-stop resource for all of the volume terms that you might come across when you're recording, when you're mixing, and when your mastering so you can really understand what they are how they're different and when we might be using each individual one so if you've ever heard decibels or rms or peak or vu or luffs or any of those things and you're like what does that mean how do i use that how does that help me with music you feel overwhelmed any of that stuff this video hopefully will take all that away for you and make it really really clear but before we get into it i want to give you something if you're trying to make more professional sounding music in GarageBand, i put together a completely free six step checklist to a pro mix that just walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside GarageBand completely free from the link in the description below. So be sure to pick that up. It's really going to help you out. But let's start talking about volume, starting with the most basic measurement of volume that we need to understand, which is just decibels. This is kind of like degrees in temperatures, right? So whether you're Fahrenheit or Celsius, this is basically just a measurement of volume. It's very similar. So our decibels are the way that we read volume, determine volume. But there's two different ways that they're actually talked about and looked at. And so I want to break those down for you really quickly, starting with how we meter decibels. So if we look here on a track, if we just are talking about our master track volume here up in the top right corner, we see that this volume is kind of kicking around in the yellow. We understand that it's a safe place. When you get up to red, that's when it starts peaking. But what does that really mean? Well, this is an interesting thing about volume that, again, I didn't really understand for a long time, and that's that on metering, when we're talking about metering volume, looking at it, zero is the top, and then you're actually working negative scores below that, working up to zero. And so when you hit zero, nothing goes past that. It just gets cut off. The digital world doesn't know what to do with it. The analog world doesn't know what to do with it. It just gets cut off. In the digital world in particular, that sounds really, really bad. And so it's important that we don't let things go past zero because they're just gonna be cut off and they're gonna be digitally distorted in a way that doesn't sound good. So zero is our absolute top on a source. And then we have a second type of decibel range that's indicated, and that has to do with how much volume we're either adding or taking away from that. So in this case, you see that our song isn't anywhere near the actual red point here. So if we needed to hear it louder, we could turn it up here. But let me just say that this is not the best solution if you're working on your master track, if you're working on your song mixing. You just wanna leave this set to zero. And if you hold option, you can just set it back to zero quickly. Hold option and click it. It's just gonna put it back to zero immediately. But just leave this at zero. But here you have a second dB rating that doesn't have to do with that zero. It's set to not adding any volume or taking away any volume. And then here we can turn up up to six decibels or turn down all the way down to negative infinity, which is functionally muted. But again, on this track, we just want to keep that set to zero. And same if you have a master track, you just want to keep this one set to zero as well. But then on individual tracks here, it looks the same. So if we look on this guitar right here, we see that it's kicking around in the green. It's a nice safe level, but it's currently a negative 11 on this source. So I've turned it down 11 decibels to be the right volume in the context of my mix. I could also turn up up to six decibels, but we don't necessarily need to do that. So I'll just put it back down to that 11. So that is decibels, really important to understand. And the first way that we should talk about metering itself it has to do with peak. So if you've ever heard peak volume, that has to do with that absolute loudest point. So I'm gonna put an image up on the screen here that shows you a peak is gonna be the loudest instantaneous hit, any specific moment, the loudest that it ever gets at any specific moment. That is really helpful when we're setting our recording volumes, for example. So if we pull up, this is is a free plugin from TB Pro Audio. It's called MV Meter 2. And if we set this to peak standard under the presets here, and I've been told that sometimes it, they don't show up up here. If they don't, you can actually click here and they also show up there, or you can actually click here where it just says the word and change it to peak. Now what it's gonna be measuring is the instantaneous volume at any specific moment. So if it ever gets up to zero, you'll know that seeing that really clearly here. So here, we can see the recorded signal coming into this because I said it at the front of my plugin list here is negative 5.8. So the loudest that it ever gets here is negative 5.8, which is still a totally safe volume, negative 4.3. Again, as long as you're not getting to zero, you're fine. So even though this gets up, it looks like to 
around negative 1.8, that's about as loud as I'd wanna go. But when it comes to setting our recording volumes for a lot of sources, a better measurement is what's called a VU meter. We'll talk about that in one second. But first, let's look at another way that we might wanna use our peak standard meter in a mix. So when we're setting our mix, we wanna to go to our master track. And when we're determining all the volumes in our mix, we wanna be monitoring the peak level of the entire mix together. So if you go to your master track, just by clicking over to master here, and put this MV Meter 2 plugin as the last plugin on your master track. What you wanna be looking for here is that your loudest point of all your tracks mixed together, which is what we're seeing here on the master track, this is where all these tracks in your session run together in one place, we wanna be seeing that this is negative six to at most negative three decibels. So we're safely down below that zero point, right? So we're looking here for this to be sitting somewhere around negative six. It's okay if it goes up to negative three and it's okay as long as it doesn't actually hit zero. It's okay if it gets a little bit louder for literally one hit in song or something. But generally speaking, you're trying to mix this to set this so that all your tracks running together in one place are peaking around negative three at the maximum, right? So here we're at negative 4.3, solid. There's no problem with that, right? Okay, so the second type of measurement that I want us to talk about is what's called RMS. And if you've ever heard of a VU meter, a VU meter is actually using RMS. But RMS is where peak is momentary, it's just that instant. RMS is actually over a short period of time. So the average volume over a short period of time. So if we set this again to RMS now, because the peak was at negative 4.6, we can pretty much assume that the RMS is gonna be lower. So our actual song here is around negative 20 RMS. And it's not gonna shift as quickly because it's not measuring peaks, right? It's not instantaneous. So this is helpful to know. This is more accurate to how we perceive volume, how we perceive sound. Our ears aren't great at perceiving that instantaneous volume. It's really good at perceiving that uh, average volume over about 300 milliseconds. So RMS is great for that, but I don't mix to it. I actually use it more when I'm setting volumes on a VU meter. We'll go look at that in one second. Or when I'm in the mastering phase. And there you're looking for negative 12 to negative nine, negative eight on the high end on our max for our RMS when we're mastering. So in this case, I see that I probably need to add 10 to 12 decibels of volume to our mix to get it loud enough. I would do that in the mastering stage, so not worrying about it while I'm mixing it. It's really key to understand that. Mixing is about balancing all your tracks together in your session. Mastering is about bringing it up to commercial volume. So when you're mixing, don't worry about it being loud or loud enough. Just worry that it's feeling right across the tracks in the song and that you're staying away from digital zero, that too loud point. But let's look really quickly at how we might use this to set an appropriate recorded volume level. So here we have our guitar, and if you put the MV Meter 2 plugin as the first plugin on the individual track while you're setting the recording volume on your interface, and you set this to VU, what you wanna be looking for here is that you're sitting around zero. So this is the average volume, but on a VU meter, this is calibrated to negative 18 decibels. So zero here is actually negative 18. This is an ideal recording volume. So usually what I'll do is I'll pull this up, I'll get this in the ballpark where sometimes that's going past and that's fine because zero is actually negative 18, not digital zero but it's sitting somewhere in this range. It's not way too quiet or way past it. I start there and then I will switch over to peak and I'll just check on peak and make sure that again, I'm not actually getting close to zero. So in this case, we saw that that guitar is coming in around, I think at the loudest point it hit at like 1.3 or something like that. Again, that's fine because I'm not actually hitting zero. Once you hit zero, it just gets cut off digitally, sounds bad. But in this case, we're solid, negative 4.8, negative 4.3, that's fine. And then on the VU meter, I'm seeing that it's hitting around zero decibels, which is again, over 300 milliseconds calibrated to negative 18 for that zero. So this is really great, really helpful for setting your recording volumes. Now let's talk about one final type of volume and this really has to do with mastering. You might've heard about it. This is kind of controversial if you will in the world. It's your Luff score. This is something that Spotify and other streaming platforms use to figure out how loud your song really is, accurately is. And that's it's an amazing new technique that's a little bit more advanced. So all these ones that we've talked about so far are just straight up measurements of decibels. Luffs is looking at something a little bit differently and it's factoring in how we actually perceive sound, how we hear sound, because we don't hear sound equally across the frequency spectrum. So if I actually pull up first, our EQ here, 
And when we think about our low end up to our high end, we perceive sound a little bit differently across these frequency spectrums. So we have sub, low end information down here up to bright information. If I play a little bit of this here, you'll see that my curve has a little bit more low end and, and falls off a little bit and towards the high end, especially around these higher frequencies. Now, this is a pretty average curve for the most part for a mix. But what we really need to understand here has to do with this curve. So imagine this across that same EQ from low end all the way up to high end. And then this here on the left side is how loud it is. This has to do with how we perceive sound. So what you see here is that we perceive sound differently at different volumes. If you've been an EQ expert or the Ultimate Garage Band Mixing course, you've heard me talk about this before. This is a really important thing to understand. And what we're seeing here is that as songs are quieter, the volume is quieter, we hear less low end, right? It takes more volume from the source for us to perceive it equally to the mid-range, for example. So around a thousand hertz is mid-range when we're way down here in the 50 sub-range hertz area where it's like low end. We don't perceive that as well at quieter volumes. Similarly, we don't actually perceive kind of these brighter frequencies up here. We do start to often perceive a little bit better again in super high frequencies, but as we age, we actually lose some of that. So you see that the curve drops back down here. And then we're really sensitive right here. This is around 3000, 2500 hertz up to about 4000. We're really sensitive there. And so what this curve is telling us is how we perceive sound differently across the frequency spectrum. At quieter volumes, we perceive less low end and less high end. At louder volumes, it starts to level out a little bit. It's a little bit more even as the volume gets louder. And so what the Luff score is doing is it's actually integrating that in with the actual volume score and giving us a much more advanced accurate depiction of how we actually hear it. And this ultimately is kind of the end all be all when it comes to streaming platforms. So Spotify is looking for negative 14 as their kind of minimum left score. Again, you could have a quieter song that's below that, but if it's louder than negative 14, it's actually gonna turn it down. That said, a lot of mastering engineers are still mastering to negative eight, negative nine left scores as kind of their standard. And so, yes, Spotify is gonna turn it down if it goes past that, but there's kind of a dynamic range fullness that you get if you do go past that. Ultimately though, again, this is the mastering stage. So I would never actually put this on in a mixing session. I would do it in a mastering session, which is a totally different thing. If you haven't seen my videos on mastering, go check them out. But mixing is about balancing all the volumes together in the mix to be working together and not be hitting digital zero, sitting around that negative five, negative six point, on the peak meter. Mastering is where you start bringing up the volume, getting it loud, and you're looking for around negative 12 to negative eight on an RMS, which is your just basic decibel score over a short period of time. And on your lefts, you're actually gonna be looking for, as it plays and listens to a little bit of your song, you're gonna be looking for this to sit at minimum around negative 14 for most songs. And if it's a loud rock song, you might be going up to negative eight. Some even get up to negative six, I'd caution you to, if you're doing that, that's really, really loud. But generally speaking, somewhere around negative nine, negative eight is gonna be great for a really loud rock song. Even negative 10, negative 12 could be okay. But negative 14 is often gonna be a little bit too quiet for a super loud rock song. But ultimately, do it to your tastes. Don't worry about getting it too loud. But that's what the Lufts is telling us. It's loudest units full scale and it's integrating in decibels and how we actually perceive sound. So it's a very accurate measurement, which is great. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. So we've talked about decibels and we've talked about it in terms of the volume slider and how we can add or take away volume and the metering, zero being the absolute loudest on the metering. We've talked about peak, we've talked about RMS, we've talked about VU, and we've talked about LUFS. And if you understand this, you understand more or less everything there is to know when it comes to volume. So if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a Pro Mix and GarageBand. It's really gonna help you out. And before we go, I wanna hear from you. Did this kind of unlock any of these for you or are you still confused by any of them? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear either which one it unlocked or which one you're still kind of confused by in the comments below and I can address those a little bit more in the future. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing